like I said, again, uh, if I can go back. Now, um, with the Black Lives Movement, which, um, yeah, which has really changed a lot of things when it comes to, of course, equality mm. in de many different industries, not only the fashion industry alone, many different industries, the way people's perspectives, you know, whether it comes to like um, size, weight, mm, mm, body shapes, mm, mm. skin tones. Mm, it's, I think it, it's just, it, you know, it, it has changed people in many other things. It started with race, but I feel like it has also mm. um, rolled over to other, to other aspects of life as yeah. well. So um, what I came to realize now when you talk about pay and all these kind of things, um, what I, yeah, what I came to realize now with the Black Lives Movement, one was we had no equal opportunity when it Ooh. came to black models and white models, mm. right? For me, I've always, like, I'm the one who always made excuses to myself and other models that, eh, this industry is for Caucasians, mm. you know? The market is Caucasian. At the end of the day, the client is the one who chooses how their product is going to sell. Mm. So just calm down, chill, this is not your industry. Mm. This is not Africa. Mm. You know, that's what I've always felt and this is what I've always, um, of course, said. To, said to the other girls. And then, uh, so that's equal opportunity. Another thing I came to realize after now with this movement again, was our rates were definitely not the same. The oh. white girl got paid more. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yes. Hmm? We were inferior. <laughs> Even mm. though I got that opportunity to break through the industry and break my 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 beauty um, my, my beauty um, perceptions perception barriers, that which was good, we were still inferior mm. when it came to the white the white girl, right? And I felt bad after that that I was actually championing and and actually tolerating and maybe also. Um, promoting tolerance to my colleagues, mm. my other black model colleagues, to accept the situation. Which the status quo. The status quo, you know, just because we didn't, we didn't, we, it, we didn't belong there. Mm. But what I learned was that we are all human. Wherever you are, whatever you, you know, wherever you know, wherever you come from, we should all have an equal opportunity. Mm. Yes, and this has really, really changed especially with the Black Lives Matter. Mm. Even now, I mean, you know, like I'm telling you, it has spilled on to other aspects of life. Fashion, the fashion show, fashion shows have different age groups. Before it was 16 year old, 16 year olds only, by the way, 16 year old, 18, by 20 you're too old, you're a grandma, right? And the body shape, you, yep. you are supposed to look like a 14 year old boy. Mm. Flat bum, flat chest, very skinny. That was now the high fashion model, what? right? Yes, you are. You are supposed to look like an, a small bum. Mm, you can't book any show, right? That was how it was, which of course caused a lot of trouble when it came to anorexia. Africa, yeah, okay. Oh yeah, yes, it came anorexia, yes. bulimia. Mm, you know, mm. all the, it came. It's then it was. You know, it, there was so much, so many issues that were happening back then when the when the modeling criteria were so hard. Mm. Nakumbuka. Yes, so I remember, was, yeah, I remember that, was, the whole anorexia. Yeah, anorexia and all these things. So that has really changed now. Um, there's, there's models of different shapes. There's even curved models. Yeah. I did, a, I did Valentino Couture just like three weeks ago. Mm. Oh my gosh, I was so surprised because Couture, for, first of all, who, do you know who used to walk in Couture? Dead people. <laughs> Skinny, even a model like me can never make a job. <laughs> I did <that> because <laughs> that's funny. I was like, what? Hey, <laughs> you like, finished, yeah. Hey, finish, finish, finish. <laughs> yani, mfupa and skin. Yeah. Those are the girls they used to want to for couture. The girl looks like she's dead. She's just walking dead, right? That is what they used to use for couture. Mimi, there was no there was no way I could ever I was you're out, fat. out, yeah. Mm, minimum, no, no, I'm obese when it came you. to Nini. Yeah, the way I am, like, <laughs> yeah. I was obese now for, for <laughs> Gochu. <laughs> so, these days, I was so surprised. I did Valentino the other day. He had plus size models. Mm. Big African. We were like five models. And I think four were Kenyan. 
what? Yes, so what? Kukona, hey, kukona, kukona, sasa, hey, I'm like, even in your Kenya. Ah, <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Yani, of course, they knew me. Yeah, yeah. So they came to say hi. But then when they were bouncing, because there were some I didn't know, they were still going make hair and makeup yeah. and things like this. So every every time a new one comes now and I got here in Swahili, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> What? <laughs> I know. It was so crazy. They had an 70-year-old year old woman in the show. Can you imagine? Nice. They were just cutting a crossboard. I loved. Because now people can resonate yep. with this. Um, yep. with, the, with, with the clothes. With the fashion industry. Mm. You have more people like who are long. You know, you know what, what I was deprived of. When I was growing up, when it comes to standard, when it comes to standard of beauty, mm. now a uh, old woman can, an older woman can feel like she's still beautiful. Mm. It's mm. not it because umezeka, you've lost your beauty. No, she's still beautiful. And a seventy-year-old did Valentino the other day. Big model, you know, you're not fat and ugly. Mm. You're mm. still beautiful. Exactly. You know, that girl did Valentino the other day. Mm. Dark skin model. You're not ugly, you know. You're beautiful. That you know, somebody, uh, dark models did the nini. Exactly. Biggest show in the world the other day, right? Yeah. So they're 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 really. I mean, it's this. Um, this is three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Yeah, yeah. Now it's broken. That show for me broke so many boundaries on you know so many levels, and I really really loved it. Mm. Mm, mm. And and, I'll, and it's happening with other designers as well. It's not only Valentino. I love There's it. There's other designers that are doing that as well. Yeah. Hey, this is an industry in a three quarter. Okay, so <laughs> I mean, you, I don't want you to skip a lot because uh -huh. there's some stuff that I feel like. So you're in New York. Do you mm -hmm. move from New York? Yes. So now. Or what happens after after so that show? So the thing with me is that. Um, so like I'm saying, I'm not gonna get into every single show I did or every single, of course, every, every single shoot many. I did. So. Um, the insecurity, financial insecurity, is what made me pull out of modeling for a, a minute, right? Yeah, because I felt like it gets to a certain point, you start, you know, it's a high and then it comes down, and then, you know, it's a high, it stabilizes, mm -hmm. right? And then it goes down. Mm. I didn't want to go like this. I went to a high and I stabilized and Nikajikata because there's no way <laughs> you're going to go down. No, I didn't want to. Mm. I didn't want to do that because once you get to a downward spiral, I saw a lot of girls that just don't get out of it. Mm. You know, I had really me. I had been watching as well mm. the trend in the industry when it came to so modeling. So downward spiral means that you're getting called one show. Yeah, down now it's like hey, okay, you're starting to struggle with your rent because uh. you think yeah, you're starting to go. You know, you're not, you're not making, getting cultural. You're not getting, yeah, you're making, you're not making ends meet and things like that. Like, like, but, and then the same time, I'm telling you, black models were not being paid like, you know, the white ones. White girls. White girls were able to invest. White models were able to, you know, buy homes. You know, they were able to do that. Black model, I don't think you were able to do that. So once, you know, you, you had enough. That's mm. fine to sustain yourself. Mm. But once you started going downhill, mm -mm 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 it's really bad. Because mm -mm 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 I know a lot of like, I can tell you from like Sudanese girls who just like got into messed up drugs because mm. now, you know, starting depression and all these kind of things started getting to yeah. them and so on. So, you know, girls got into drugs, girls, you know, all of a sudden a girl just disappears, you know. Mm. We don't even know where she, yeah, it was just a lot of, um, I didn't want to get there. Okay. And then I also found a lot of models who are like four in their forties and they haven't had children. I was like, nah, uh -huh. that's not going to be me. Mm -hmm. That will not be me. So, nikafanya fanya, and then, you know, when it stabilized, Kidoga was like, okay, this is a good time for me now. You know, nimeji, nimeji ingiza kwa industry, nimeji seti, everybody knows who I am, okay? So, neza kujikata sasa, so I stopped. I went, I had my, my first child, moved back to Kenya, established my, um, my casting, my casting and uh, model management, um, agency mm -hmm. but now i i partnered with my agency in paris Ooh. not ford now i had moved i had between that had already started changing because ford started going down oh so, yeah ford started going down and my bookers what you no, normally when you're in an agency who you're really making a relationship with, with is not the company yes it's the booker yep the one who you're always talking to yeah the one, mm. yeah Yanni. and then especially now you're in this world which you don't know 
you don't know, you're not familiar with, and then that is the only person you, you know who is protecting you, who you know, yep, yep. who knows about you. Form you. A relationship, yep. Those are the pe the person you form a relationship with. So you get very like uh, close mm -hmm. with your booker. So when they move, maybe waki choka na the certain company and they move, you usually move with them. Yep, yep. That is me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I don't know about the other girls, but I always moved with my my my. My your booker, nini, my booker, because mm. I I could relate to her, and she knew all about me and yep. things like this. And she can sell you very well. Mm, yeah, yeah. So I m I moved with them. So within that, I changed a few agencies in the different cities, and then also Ford started um, also, also declining mm. when it came to you know work and so on. Um, so eventually, I left. I stepped out. So did you tell your booker I'm I'm taking a temp? Yes, yes. I'm going to get a baby. I, I told my agencies not that. Um, I just felt, I just pulled out. Okay. I just pulled out. I didn't even explain really. Mm. I just pulled out and all of a sudden I was a bit hard to reach. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a bit hard to reach because I had already started, I had already come here and I decided I'm going to start a casting agency. Yeah. 